Are you new to the SharePoint Admin Center or just looking to sharpen your skills? Well, I am going to show you in this video some of the basics to help you get familiar with key administrative tasks like managing sites, permissions, and user access. My name is Allison Gonzalez. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer. Let's jump right on in to SharePoint. So we're going to get started by going over to the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. And you can get here with this URL, admin.microsoft.com. And that will take you here. You will need to sign on with your credentials. And of course, you also need to have the SharePoint admin role to be able to see any of this information. Now, once you're signed in over to the left at the bottom, you will see the different admin centers that you have access to. So the different admin abilities that you are granted. So let's take a look now at SharePoint admin. One of the core responsibilities as an admin is managing your organization's SharePoint sites. This includes team sites and communication sites. If you're wondering what the difference is for those two, we've got a video on that and I'll have that linked below. Let's take a look now at how you can view, create, and manage those sites right here in the admin center. On your SharePoint Admin Center page. On the left side, we have our navigation. Now I can see I have home, sites, policies, settings, and more. Let's take a look at our active sites. Here in the active sites section, you'll see all of the SharePoint sites currently being used by your organization. You can also search, filter, or sort through this list to find specific sites. I can see I have all of the sites and they're currently in alphabetic order and I of course can change that ascending descending. I can also sort to see if they have a team site connected, if they are channel sites, the amount of storage that is used. So if I need to see which site is using the most amount of storage, I can easily go through and sort this list of active sites. And then I can see who is the primary admin, maybe again, sorting and seeing who is maybe the largest admin, right? Who is going through, who is doing the most, right? I can change any of these filters. We can also sort to see if we are using a team site or right different ones are in here and we've got a variety of teams, communication, um, and more. We can also sort through the last activity. So we've got a lot of options on here when we scroll through. So that way I can see, all right, and sort if I wanted, what was the most recent site, right? What are the ones everyone is using, the ones that are the most frequently accessed versus ones they were made forever ago and haven't gotten touched in years, right? Maybe that's time to remove those sites and get rid of that if no one's actually utilizing that information. We also have our storage limits that are set for each site and the amount of storage that is used on here. So we can see a lot of information and easily sort and filter through all of that to understand greater what is going on in our organization, what is going on on these sites. Now, if I need to manage a site, all I need to do is click on its name and then I can adjust the settings. So if I go over to Allison's awesome test group, I get a pane that pops out that shows exactly what's going on, right? This is a public team. I can edit the name, the description. I can also modify, right, any of that other information, like that site address and more. Now that's all in my general category. I can also move over to activity to see when was the last site activity, the amount of files that are stored on this site, and even page views in the last 30 days. You can also get into membership. Now this is a really easy place to add your members in bulk. So that way, if you don't wanna to go to the site, add them one by one, again, very easily, I can go through and add individuals over here. I can also go through, right, and decide who else is gonna be an owner of this site. If I want someone else to be able to manage and have full control over this site, I could add owners or add in additional members. See, I added Angelica to this one, one of our other trainers, and who is gonna be the site admin and the owners and the members. And we can also see 
visitors, right? If you wanna add visitors so they can view the site, you can handle this over here. There's also about and links to Microsoft documentation related to permissions in Teams and site permissions to make this really easy for you if this is your first time modifying this information and to really understand all of the ins and outs and that specificity that we know can exist with certain Microsoft elements. Also at the top of this pane, I have the ability to go view the site, to click, open it, see everything that is in there, and as well as delete. So right, if we're going through and I can check and see like, all right, this one is really old. It doesn't look like anyone's been on here in a while. I can pull it open, take a look at it and see, all right, actually there's nothing on this right? Nothing's been used in a while. Someone made this and just forgot about it, right? You could easily go and then delete that and get, get rid of that. Another essential task is ensuring that sites have the right permissions for security and access control. You can quickly update who has access to each site right from here. So that makes it very easy again to modify all of your sites more in a bulk fashion then going back over to SharePoint going one by one to each site clicking on each site navigating through right um, and then adding in your members and doing that from here it makes it a lot easier right we could go up to our members in that top right corner if I wanted to add more on my actual site page but being able to do that in the admin center as an admin Gonna be a lot faster especially if you need to do that for multiple sites i can just work down my list versus navigating to each site in sharepoint now if i need to make a full site i can also create a site right here in the admin center right it's your one-stop shop for all things sharepoint where you don't even have to go over to your list of sharepoint sites on sharepoint to do that you can do this right here in your admin center and creating a new site is a very common admin task so you're able to create both team site and communication sites depending on the need of your viewer. All you have to do is hit that create button on your active sites and that will choose your team site or your communication site. And then you can set that up just as you would if you were going to be building that site regularly on SharePoint. For this example, I'll just create a team site so we can see how this process mirrors identically the process of doing this in SharePoint. Let's choose event planning for this one. We can see exactly what we get and what is included in this template. Let's do neat events. Because the team site, we get that group email address we can also see that site description and the site address. Now, a little bit different is because we are as an admin creating this, kind of assume we're creating this for someone else. Now we could of course put ourselves as the group owner or here you could put the name of the person that you're building this site for who is gonna be the owner and managing and handling this site after you have created it for them. I'm gonna put myself in. And we can go through and same, right? We're choosing our sensitivity, that public or confidential. We're choosing our privacy settings, whether that's public or private. And you get to choose again, the language that works best for your end audience. You also, interesting on the admin side, you get to choose this. You can also pick the time zone and the storage limit for this. So you get a little bit more capabilities of site creation um, and management and kind of just organization here in the admin center versus what you would do if you were creating that in just regular SharePoint. We're gonna hit create site. And again, I could add my members right here, but as I said in my, in my introduction video where we built our sites in SharePoint, I like to have my site completely done, make sure I have everything updated, images, information, documents, everything that I'm gonna put on that site. And I like to do all of that prior to inviting anyone onto it. So my general process is always to make the site, get that looking as close to done, invite a few people in so that way they can give feedback on the site, make sure we have everything. Maybe I forgot something crucial to the whole team, right? Get that feedback. And then once everything is good to go, invite all of the end users to that. We're gonna go ahead and hit finish. 
And here we go, right at the top, because I filtered my sites to the most recent, I can see that neat event site is right here at the top. So I can easily go in and take a look at this site and make any modifications that I need to here. So once created, this site appears in this active site list, super easy to view all of your sites. Sometimes when you create a site, it may take a little bit of time before it loads into your SharePoint homepage, right? And when you're looking for those sites, like I just made the site, where is it? And sometimes it can take a few minutes, but if you have the admin center, any active site will be listed over here, easy to find. And now, right, you can add any other customizations you want to its settings, its permissions, its storage, the items that you're adding onto it and more. And don't forget the difference between our team sites, which are collaboration, right? That data that information goes both ways, people making modifications and updates versus communication, which is for information sharing, right? Here's a bunch of information, take whatever you need, um, but it's not that collaboration environment like a team site. Now that we've created a site, let's go on to managing users and permissions. One of the most critical roles for a SharePoint admin is managing user permissions. You need to make sure that the right people have access to the right content without compromising security. So let's go to that neat event site that we just built. So on our neat events site, let's go over to our settings and take a look and see what as a SharePoint admin you have access to. Now notice I do have a message at the top that says, I don't have permission to manage general settings for this group. You need to be a global or an exchange admin to manage them. Now within the Power Platform, global admin is the top of the top. That is the admin of the admins. And then inside, right, every Microsoft program has their own admins. Now some abilities for certain programs rely on also having abilities for other programs. So for some of you, you may be the only one in your organization who manages this. So you're the global admin. You're the admin of all the admins. You have your every admin, right? Not only do you have that global admin title, but you're also the Teams admin. You're the SharePoint admin. You're the Power BI admin. You are the Power Platform admin, right? There's a ton of different of those admin titles that have distinct abilities for their program, but then kind of rolling up that global admin controls all of those. So at different points in programs, you might think, right, I should have abilities for this, but it can kind of overflow into a different programs kind of genre. And so you need to also have abilities to manage it there or be like, call up your global admin or your exchange admin and say, hey, I need to make some modifications in SharePoint related to this or that. Can you do that for me and get those in there? But even if you are just a SharePoint admin and not a global or exchange admin, you still do have the ability to change your privacy level from private to public or public to private, depending on what it was set up before. You can also set for external file sharing to new and existing guests, anyone existing or just people in your organization. And you can see that sensitivity label again, you can modify this. So really those are the kind of, a lot of the things you change in the setup. You can go back and modify if you don't like what you had it for originally. Now I also can get into membership though, and I do have all of the abilities to add in additional owners. So if I wanna add in anyone else to own this site or to just be a member of the site, I'm able to do that. And I can also control who is a site admin versus site owners, site members, and visitors for this site. Now at the bottom, we can see we have those extra links that help us out by going to that Microsoft documentation. So if you do have any additional questions, you can head over to that Microsoft documentation to review in depth those group permissions and site permissions. Also inside of our SharePoint Admin Center, we have a lot of other elements that we are able to control where we can understand better what is going on inside all of these SharePoint sites, usage, and the different elements that are included. So right here on my home in my navigation, I am able to see file activity. I can see different sites 
segments. So I kind of have this dashboard view of what is happening inside of my organization. And I can see these usage metrics right here on that home page. So I can see the SharePoint storage usage, 365 active user reports and get a lot of amazing analytics and then even view that full report if I want to better understand who is using what sites where and what are they doing on those sites. So they give me lots of things like total visits, files shared, and even how much storage is being used. These analytics can really help you understand important elements like when a site is running low on storage, when other potential issues may have arisen, and even if if there are any security concerns based on user activity. That is our quick introduction to the SharePoint Admin Center. We've covered managing sites, users, permissions, as well as how to monitor and look at the activity of your sites. Now we are in the process of creating a SharePoint admin class that will be live on our on-demand learning platform in early 2025. I would love if you would comment below any additional topics that you would like to see related to administration in SharePoint that I can both add to the class and make some videos for you on right here for YouTube. So let's let me know what you are looking to learn. I would love to help you out. Also, don't forget to like this video and then subscribe to our channel to make sure you stay up to date on all Microsoft content.